All right, next up on the main stage is UCLA with head coach Steve Alford and student athletes Jalen Hands and Chris Wilkes. <coughs> Good job, Myron. Fire away with questions. Morning, coach. morning. Bobby, earlier was just up here. Did you alter your, the way you did your non-conference schedule this season based on the fact that they got in largely based on the strength of their non-conference schedule last year? No, um, our schedule, I, I've liked how we've scheduled, so, we, and we couldn't change it a whole lot, man. We already had um, finishing a home and home with Cincinnati, and then we're in that Champions Classic every year with Ohio State, uh, Carolina, and Kentucky, and then we're always in an exempt tournament, and this year's exempt tournament's in Vegas with Michigan State, Texas, and Carolina. So we're going to play two of those teams, and then each year we have to start a new home and home, and this year we started home and home with Notre Dame, which is... That's home and home we've really been looking forward to just because of the history of the two schools. So, you know, we're going to play, what, what's that come out to? A minimum of five power five schools. So, I think if you're playing five, that's a, that's a pretty good non-league schedule. I'm not sure I want to play more than that in the non-league. How, how relieved are you that uh, both Chris and Jalen are here today? Because obviously they both could have left on the end. Yeah, it's not so much relieved because it, it, it truly is in the spring. It, it, it all flips. It goes from being about the team to what's best for the individual. And I thought both of them did a very good job of just doing that process of that's why you do it. You do the process, get the information you need. Uh, they got the information they need. I, I think uh, Chris might have been a little bit closer. Um, but as I try to tell him, you got a, you got a box of 30 teams in it. If you're going to put your name in and stay in, you'd like to at least have half of that box where there's some guarantees because you're never going to be able to predict draft night. And if you only got one or two teams that are interested and then somebody drops in the draft and they take that person that they didn't think was going to be there, then you're, you're, you're going to be out of luck that way. So I, I thought he did a really good job of just kind of taking all the information in and uh, they both, then when they announced coming back, I thought both of them had a really good summer of – the information that they got, they put to use in their in their workouts. They've both gained weight. They've gotten stronger. Um, defensively, they've got a different mindset. So uh, it ends up when they come back, it, it helps us as college coaches because it's another voice that maybe what they've been being told, they hear that now from the, the highest level. Wait, what do you, sorry, last one. What, what do you envision uh, <clears throat> to their roles with this team? Well, obviously, Tiger, uh, that was a huge loss um, here early in the season uh, because we thought that um, with Tiger, we could, we could obviously have Jalen on the ball and then take him off the ball. And now probably what you'll see our team look a little bit more like, we'll still get him off the ball, whether that's with Chris Smith or others, but uh, Jalen will probably take on the look more of an Aaron Holiday of a year ago where he's initiating a lot of our offense. Um, throwing the ball ahead, entering the offense, those type of things but as our primary ball handler. Um, but I think he's still going to be one of our better scorers because he shoots the ball, he scores it well. Uh, Chris, I think, has a chance to be one of the top scorers in this league and one of the, uh, I think, the, uh, and when you look across the country and you start looking at the next year's draft, uh, I think both of these guys are, are potential first-round picks, and I think uh, Chris has a chance to – um, you know, he was on the cusp this year, and I think going into this draft, he could be a lottery pick. Um, so I think both these guys are key parts to what we're doing, obviously. Uh, but their leadership is going to be huge for us because we are tall, we're long. I think we're as athletic as we've been. Hopefully we keep our depth. We've lost a little bit of our depth with injuries. Um, but we've still got eight guys that have not played a second of college basketball. So these two guys are going to be instrumental in our leadership of helping these young guys understand what it's like to play. Is there any doubt about Sharif's long-term No, well, yeah, he'll absolutely be back. Um, you know, obviously any, any kind of surgery is, um, you know, that, that's always something you're always concerned about. But, uh, um, yeah, everything that uh, – Everything he's been told, everything we've been told, um, the, the long term is very, very good for him. So uh, this was something that uh, basically birth defect and something, fortunately, that was found. And Sharif's done a tremendous job of giving an awful lot of thanks to uh, our trainer, our doctors, our medical staff, 
it was something that definitely needed to be found and was found, and now it, it can be corrected through surgery. And um, he should be full goal, um, you know, once all that rehab is, is over. There's not a timeline yet of when it's all going to happen, um, but it is something he should recover from. Is there a date for the surgery? Not yet, no. Not really much of a reaction. Um, I've just seen the, the, the blurps that have come out, but uh, I know how we run a program. And so, you know, I, I've had no loss of sleep or those type of things of knowing, you know, how our assistants go back. In fact, I had a meeting, I think it was Monday, uh, again, just thanking my staff of how they've gone about it. Um, and, and when I say go about it, it's about how we recruit uh, each year as a whole. And, um, very, very appreciative of how you know we're gonna we're gonna lose games. We're gonna we're not gonna get all the recruits and those type of things. But um, those guys know that we're gonna do it with the utmost integrity and character in mind. And um, I'm very, very confident that our staff has done that. So very pleased with how that's gone. He was Brian Bowen Senior clearly had his hand out from what he himself testified. Was there ever any overture he made to you guys? No. Mm -hmm. As soon as next season, is it more long term? Yeah, that's the plan. Um, you know, I I don't know. I probably can't get into all the medical stuff. Uh, I got to be careful there. But just, Ale you know, Alex Olszewski is going to be out for a while with his foot surgery that he had. And he'll be back sometime at the end of non-conference. Tiger's out for the year. Sharif's out for the year. But both Tiger and Sharif, um, the plan is they'll be back. Uh, and they, I, actually, Tigers is probably longer. Tigers is an ACL injury, and uh, everything we've been hearing, um, it'll be sometime mid to late summer, probably by the time Tiger really starts doing some things because of the nature of his injury. But Sharif, um, if the if the surgery, you know, when it happens, I, I think then you know it, it, that's something that he should be back sometime early summer is our hope uh, with starting up workouts and doing the things he needs to do to get back. I don't, I'm not probably, I can't do that, right? I, I, don't, I don't think I'm privy for that. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, I just know he's going to have the surgery, but I, I don't know to the extent of it. Uh, that's a good question because we're kind of um, going through a lot of that now because um, um, we've had some, some minor injuries as well. Um, Cody Riley and... Chris Wilkes has been out a week. Uh, he's supposed to be back this weekend. So uh, it's just been a really tough first two weeks of practices for whatever reason. Um, I hope that once we get all those guys back, you know, we were looking at probably, uh, it's the first time I think in a long time we've had 13 on scholarship. And um, we were talking about that, that we really had uh, through our summer workouts, probably looking at 13 guys and trying to figure out, you know, one, how do we play that many, or how do who, who's going to get the lesser of that? And now, you know, you've got Tiger and Sharif uh, immediately drop that to eleven, and Alex Olszewski is going to be out a while. So, you know, I still think those the ten guys that are actively practicing and going through things, um, you know, where our plan is, those guys are going to get minutes. He just twisted a, a knee in, uh, in practice, but um, he, he should be back in the next week to two weeks. Yeah, it, they've, they've had very good summers, and um, Jalen has been tremendous. I think both Jalen and Cody give us the ability to – we can switch a lot because uh, they're long athletic bigs. Uh, I, you know, I, you've heard me mention it's the biggest team I've had. Uh, in my 28 years, I think we've got eight guys, eight guys over 6'8", but we're also very young. We've got eight guys that haven't played a second of college basketball. So it's, you know, that's a give and take. But I, I like the athleticism. We, we're moving from a Tom who was so efficient and you could pick and pop with Tom and do a lot of things offensively to where now with Cody and Jalen, continue to play the way we've played offensively, but I think we're a little bit more versatile defensively in how we can guard. Uh, whether that be in zone, whether that be in man, we're just longer, more athletic, and guys are more versatile. Our bigs can guard guards, and both Cody and Jalen are like that. Who fills those Tom and Aaron leadership 
Yeah, and, and I throw Gigi in there too. You know, Gigi's had a great off season. I think he's going to end up being with Westchester with the Knicks organization, the G League, and um, you know those three guys. Gigi was a four year guy. Tom was a four year guy. Aaron was a three year guy. So they'd been through the wars of college basketball and and just experienced guys that they knew what road trips were. They knew what what the the magnitude of home games, like the the back to back of a home game. I think so many young players. You know, get to that mindset. Well, home games you just win, and you win that Thursday game, and then all of a sudden Sunday, you lo- Saturday you lose. And those guys had that mindset of understanding the ebb and flow of college basketball, and we don't have a lot of that. You know, our experience really, you're looking at uh, Prince Ali, Alex Olashinsky, who's hurt, uh, and the two guys in the room, uh, Jalen Hands and uh, and Chris Wilkes. When it comes to minutes, now Chris Smith has had some experience and that kind of thing, but there's just not a lot of guys with experience, so. A lot of what we've done here, or will do in October, uh, even through our closed scrimmage, our exhibition game, and leading into the non-conference, um, we've just got to really zone in on getting them as much experience as we can early. But in regard to this year's leadership, I think Chris um, and Jalen have an awful lot to do with that. Now, Prince and Alex are are guys that we're going to lean to on leadership. But when you look at guys that I think are vocal guys and have the personality to lead these two here in the in this room, or there are going to be a lot of, a lot put on them. Steve, with that, that trial going on with the Adidas thing, and you guys used to be with Adidas, that, does any of that strike you as consistent at all? I mean, when you were dealing with them, did anything like that ever happen? Uh, no, I've not dealt with, but you know, I've been with, I was with Nike almost my entire career, uh, all the way through New, uh, New Mexico, and then I uh, was with uh, Adidas for uh, my first four years at, um, at UCLA, and now uh, the last two years with Under Armour. So, you know, I've gone, <laughs> I've not hit, and then when I was at Indiana, I, when I was in Indiana, we were Adidas, and when I played in the league, I was Converse. So I've hit, I've hit all the uh, shoe companies, but, you know, as far as the trial and things like that, I don't, you know, I don't have any, I don't have any comment on it. You know, it, it's, uh, it's all of the the whole the whole thing's unfortunate to our game, and we just hope that we can get some closure and and move forward, and and our game becomes better because of it. But uh, as far as my dealings and stuff with um, all the shoe companies I've been involved with, it's um, everything has been very very good. How is there? Is it possible uh, that in this, as some of the testimony is saying that some of this is happening even behind coaches' backs? You know, a, a company's trying to get a player. I guess anything's possible. I mean, I don't. Uh, that's that's a hard question because it's kind of uh, hypothetical uh, from my standpoint. I, all I can speak is for for us and for me, and um, you know, to my absolute knowledge of our program and not just program at UCLA, but over my tenure that I've had at each of my stops, um, n- none of that has. You know, happen to my to my knowledge. Two more minutes. You mentioned closure. How long do you think it'll take to have closure? That's hard too. Um, you know, obviously the trial going on, so I, I I don't even know the length of it. I don't know when decisions are going to be made. Um, but you know, you're at the the federal situation now, and then uh, ultimately uh, you'll get NCAA involvement and things. So um, it, it's hard to see. Uh, you know, when that deadline's going to be because of when the information gets to the different hands um, and then how the different hands handle the information. So I, I, I wouldn't, it'd be all guesswork as far as a, a timeline. I just, you know, I think all of us coaches and all the programs across the country just, you know, we hope closures sooner than later uh, and the adjustments in our game can be made that's only going to continue to enhance a great game that we already have uh, and enhance that further down the road. Thank you. Thanks, guys.